let's keep this sewer series rolling with these awesome sewer walls that we're going to make for the tiles that we did last week right here on Tabletop Witchcraft. <music> Hey there, welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we continue our sewer series with our sewer walls. They're gonna go with the tiles that we made last week, and we're making them out of XPS foam and DOS air dry clay. You can grab the plans over at itch.io, or you can head on over to Patreon. I've got a tier called the Contractor Tier, where I'll actually email you the PDF files um, as part of that um, subscription. Now, just a quick uh, heads up to everybody. Last month and this month, I'm taking a large chunk of the money that I made on DriveThruRPG, itch.io, Patreon, and through my Amazon affiliate links. And I'm donating that to the local Boys and Girls Club uh, just to help out with their food pantry program for the, um, the virus that's going on right now and a lot of people that are having um, some hard times um, you know, with, uh, with getting food and all that. So um, you didn't know it, but you helped donate um, to my local community, and I want to thank you for that. All right, so let's grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, so you want to start out by cutting some six inch by six inch blocks, the same as we did as the tile floors. And you can grab these plans over at itch.io. I've switched over to them um, recently. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below that'll take you right to that site. And you can see, just like before, we're going to coat these in either some foam core or like I did in this video, in some DOS clay. So uh, once you get the stencil cut out, trace over the arch onto the foam. And now what I'm doing is I'm just taking a pen and I'm marking the lines here so that when I go to cut this out with a hot wire knife, I have a guide to go by. All right, now, really important, use the hot wire knife to cut just the top arc right here that you can see of this uh, sewer wall out. Do not try and cut this all out in one go. You're going to have to do one side, then flip it over, and then do the other side. You'll never get a nice perfect cut on both sides in one go. And this hot wire knife is a pretty important tool for um, this sewer series that I'm doing here. I use it quite a bit. Um, you can pick them up for maybe like 30 bucks on Amazon. Again, there'll be in a link in the description below all the stuff I'm using in this video. Now, as you can see, we flip it over and now we can get a nice straight cut or a curved cut on the mark that we had on the wall um, on both sides. Okay, now all I'm doing is I'm marking out a 6 by 16 inch rectangle that I'm going to flatten out my clay. Um, I decided to give the uh, clay a go here instead of coating these in the dollar store foam core. And I got to tell you, I really enjoyed working with this. Um, I did pick up a, um, a pasta machine after this to help uh, flatten the sound, get a nice, um, you know, rolled mat here of the clay. I haven't had a chance to use it, but um, I'm assuming it's going to be a lot faster than rolling it out with this little pin here. And then once you get that rolled out, you want to add some texture to it with some aluminum foil, as you can see there, and then wet the clay surface and your um, rolling pin here, and um, there'll be a link up the top to a video where I'll show you actually how to make this rolling pin. Then keep it nice and wet and just kind of rock it back and forth and go across the clay and it adds an awesome texture to this. I mean, I'm absolutely in love with the way these turned out. Now you're going to overlap these just a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to fix that seam here in just a minute. So with a clay sculpting tool, all you want to do is really break up that line, that definition there where you can see that straight line where the edge of the roller hit that. So just combine a couple of bricks together. It'll um, break it up so that the eye won't really pick up on that line and you'll be all set and good to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and coat this entire thing with some Eileen's Tacky Glue. Um, don't be shy with it. Um, get it on there, smear it all out with your finger. You've got some time, the clay's not gonna dry on you, so don't freak out about you know getting it on there real quick. Um, so get a good smear over the whole thing. 
Now, what's awesome about working with this stuff is it really holds together. If you don't ro use the rolling pin too thick and actually bust all the bricks up, you can just use this like a mat, just like that. It's so satisfying to lay this on here. Even the curved part, it conforms to whatever you have cut out so easily. Um, it really was a joy working with this stuff. So all we're gonna do is pick it up here and lay it right into place. And I found that this clay, um, unlike the Sculpey Primo, um, that kind of, even the heat from your hand with the Primo will deform um, the brick pattern. This, not so much. So you can actually manhandle it a little bit. Then with uh, an Alpha knife, trim the edge here. It cuts real easy. Again, very satisfying to get a nice straight cut there. Now, um, since we did with the clay, uh, this with the clay, we're gonna use this stencil here just to mark out the um, metal fencing or the post that's gonna go on the top of this wall. But if you were using XPS or uh, foam core, this would be your stencil uh, for the top. Now I'm just using a marker here to mark the hole out. This did dry on me, so I had to go ahead and grab this pin vise to screw these holes out. But obviously the best thing to do would be to mark this out before it dries on you with some barbecue skewers and just poke holes right through that stencil and you'll be good to go. Now we're taking uh, a miniature here just to uh, measure size um, for the top of the rail. I got about close to three quarters of an inch a uh, half an inch to three quarters of an inch um, on that post. So I'll take a pair of uh, dice here, cut that out, and then I'll use the same one as my uh, my go-to to measure the length of all the rest of these posts out. That way they're all exactly the same size. All right, um, some hot glue. Uh, my glue of choice here whenever I can go to it and use it. Uh, a little dab on the hole, stick the post in, and you're good to go. And try and get these as close as you can um, to the same height. Um, it's just going to make things a little bit easier for you when you assemble the rest of the, um, I guess, the guardrail. All okay, now we're using a little bit of super glue. We're going to touch the tops of all these posts. And then we're going to lay the other um, skewer on top. And then in that cup in the background, it's a little bit of accelerant. This stuff is great. It, uh, it cures the super glue um, almost instantly. So it allows you to keep moving and you don't have to stop and hold it there um, you know, for any period of time. And that little break in the rail is for a ladder that we're going to have going up to access the top of the walkway here. Okay, now we're gonna take some uh, bendy straws here and we're gonna create some pipes going along the sewer wall. And I'm gonna wanna join a couple of these together. So we're gonna cut two of them here. The second one, we're gonna kinda of cut to fit and then we'll cut a little slit in it, which will allow us to easily slide this one into the other straw. And then you can just push them to whatever length you know, you're gonna want them at. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing here on another straw, we're gonna have two uh, pipes here, but we're gonna have this one like it bursts in the sewer. So I'm just kind of making some jagged cuts here, again, to make it look like it, it burst. Now we're gonna drill out a hole. I just took a little bit of a bigger drill bit here um, just to drill them out, to stick the straws into. All right, now I'm grabbing some green stuff. I'm not a big fan of the way the straws look like where they bend. Um, it's just going to look too much like a straw to me. So I'm just going to take some green stuff and we're going to create some couplings that are going to go over these sections here. So once you got your green stuff mixed up, wrap it all around that bendy section of the straw. And then we'll use a clay sculpting tool to, you know, square up our edges um, on both ends. And it helps to keep uh, you know, some water nearby to keep the tool wet. That way it doesn't stick to it while you're working with it. 
All right, now we'll keep this section of the tool wet and we're gonna go ahead and just create a little bit of a bell end um, to this coupling. Just adding a little bit of detail. So we'll do that to both ends. Now I'm just gonna poke some holes around the whole thing to look like some rivets, um, you know, holding everything together. Okay, and now I got a, you know, a straight coupling here in the center where we join the two straws together so you don't see that seam uh, as well. All right, once we got that done, we're gonna take some apple barrel gray and we're gonna paint up uh, the entire piece. Now, like we did the sewer tiles, um, if you haven't seen that, check the video. I'll put a uh, link above where you can check that video out. Um, we don't want to dry brush too much here. We're going to go real light. Um, it's more of like a heavy damping motion here. I'm mixing some gray with some black, a little bit of green. And just dab, dab it all around. You want to make it look like things are growing up the wall of this sewer. Take a metallic color and paint this guardrail here or the handrail. Um, just take a little bit of super glue, put it actually on the paper, and super glue this rail right to the paper. It's going to help you when you're putting the, um, the rungs of the ladder um, in place. And again, I'm just using super glue for all of this. And we're just going to wash the entire tile. Now once that's dried, and we're going to take some Vallejo pigments. Um, this stuff really, um, in my opinion, is what makes these uh, really unique and stand out and look dingy. So you want to take some of these pigments. I'm using um, this brown color with a little bit of the yellow. And put it in dry, take a brush, and just you know, smear it in all of the joints of all these bricks. You know, moving it all around here just like that. Again, you don't want to cover the entire um, tile. Um, just, you know, do it in sections. And I'll show you here in a minute how we're going to bind this together to keep it in place. Okay, so this is, uh, again, Vallejo, it's airbrush thinner. And this is the stuff you wanna use. Put it in a little pipette like that or a little eyedropper and just you know, drop it in place and that's gonna bind all this together and keep it um, so it doesn't move. What you don't wanna do is brush this stuff on and rub it because you'll end up taking the paint right off of everything you've already done. It will remove the paint. So just drop it on there. Don't worry about how much you drop on just remember, don't rub it once you have it in place. Now this is some Vallejo German gray. It's a really dark, dark gray. We're painting the pipes up. Then we're gonna just dry brush it in a metallic color, a uh, gunmetal gray, and it really makes an awesome looking pipe color. I absolutely love the way this looked. And this is great. It's a really good technique if you're doing any type of like steampunk or modern type um, tile as well. Drop some hot glue in place. That's what's going to hold all these pipes in place. And this one we're going to angle down a little bit, um, you know, like it, it kind of blew up or burst. So we'll have this one angling down, and then the next one, glue that one in straight. And you can see how the end of the pipe looks like it actually split. Now we made some rust. It's some of our pigment again that we took um, from the wall. We mixed that with a little bit of red paint and some water. And then putting some underneath where the pipes are going to the wall, and just let it drip down like the rust is kind of, you know, seeping over time. Here I put a bunch in a air, big area 
like uh, the water burst and just, you know, building up gunk over time. Here, simply hot glue the ladder that we did earlier right into place. Add a little bit of rust color to all of um, this metal. And as you can see, I connected the handrail at the top there. We'll paint that up here in a minute. And now I want to darken this up even more. So what I did was I took some um, known oil from Games Workshop, a little wash, and I'm dripping that down um, the wall as well. All right, then take a little bit of black paint. Uh, we don't want to see this. Uh, we get this nice wall here. We don't want to see the pink. So paint all that up black, and um, that piece will be pretty much all set and ready to go. Now we're taking a little bit of Eileen's Tacky Glue, and I got some um, some greenery here. I believe this is Woodland Scenics. Um, I'll have a link in the description um, to this exact item. And we're just gonna hang this off of the uh, the rail, just to look like some moss is growing down. Add some, some color to the piece. All right, now we're switching over to a second uh, wall tile. This is a really small um, paper towel roll. And I'm gonna cut this little section off, push it into the foam so I know exactly where I'm cutting. Then with an X-Acto knife, I'll just score it out. That way I can slide this pipe right into the wall. So keep an eye out if, you know, if you're gonna do this project for smaller type um, paper towel rolls, um, not just you know, the standard size. I've got a whole bunch of different sizes uh, in my arsenal. So that one should fit in pretty decent. Then do the same thing for the wall. We're gonna have one pipe spilling um, water over into the other one. Okay, then we're gonna lay the clay on this just like we did before and use this clay sculpting tool to you know cut around the edge. Don't just push the pipe in over it because you'll end up dragging and pulling the clay and you'll distort the bricks. So you wanna kind of trim the edge here with some sort of a tool before you put the paper towel roll into place. All right, now I took some green stuff and I just made a little bit of a bell end, um, actually on both of these pipes here. You know, you can make the bell a little bit bigger if you want to. Um, but just using this clay sculpting tool, press that right into place. Then we paint it up. I'm also doing this pipe the same as I did the smaller pipe on the other section, again with the, um, the German gray. And then the dry brush of the metallic color. And don't worry, we're gonna grunge this whole thing up before we're done. Okay, now taking some Vallejo water texture, we're gonna just put some strips, um, probably three to four inches long, on some uh, parchment paper, and we're gonna let that dry. And as you can see here, they peel up real easy. That's gonna help us with our water effect. So we've already had one layer of Vallejo water effect, water texture in here. Um, I let that dry. I'm adding a second layer now, just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna tilt the piece back to get the water all the way to the back of the tunnel or the, the pipe. Now we're gonna lay in those strips of the te water texture that have dried. Now, don't worry that this looks like it picked up pieces of the paper or it looks like it's not translucent. Um, it didn't, it's just how it looks when you peel it off the parchment paper. The second you add more um, water texture to this and let it drip down, it's gonna um, instantly turn clear. It's actually pretty cool. All right, now we're gonna take a second strip and lay this in as well. Get a couple different layers here, some dimension. So you can see that looks pretty cool already. Now we're gonna take some water texture, let some drip over the top, and we're also gonna move the piece and get some behind as well, which will give it that nice translucent um, look once it's done.
Okay, now we just take some um, burnt grass, green green grass um, flocking, um, and I'm just smearing it around the edge of this pipe to really uh, make it look like it's, you know, disgusting. You know, it also conceals uh, where the pipe is, obviously coming in and out of the wall. All right, wall number three. Here's an even smaller tube that I found here. And just like before, we're gonna cut out the hole here in the foam. Making sure that the, uh, the pipe fits. And then we're just gonna press this one straight into the wall here. I know I said to cut it out earlier, but this is such a small pipe, it actually did a really good job of almost cookie cutting um, that hole there. A little bit of Eileen's tacky glue, put it on the pipe, slide it in, you're all set and ready to go. Now I'm making what's sort of like an Orangeburg pipe. We're gonna just take some brown and some orange paint, mix those two together, and paint these two pipes up. All right, and as we did before, I did a little wash over that pipe to dirty it up once it dried. Uh, this is some uh, Vallejo, um, different uh, water effect um, that I'm using that's actually not glue there on the end of that skewer. And I'm just taking a small strip of the water texture that had dried, putting that in place, and then letting some water texture drip down um, that as well. And let it run wherever it wants to, and um, let it drip down the wall, and it'll look great once it's done. Okay, now as we did before, we're gonna go ahead and add some moss effect um, growing up the wall uh, where all this moisture is. Same mixture as before. You know, and get it in all the cracks and stuff like that. You know, put it wherever, wherever you want, but the cracks are a good place to start there. All right, now for our final wall, we're gonna do a deteriorated section and we're gonna have something living in this hole here. So cut out a little uh, section of the wall um, that we can kind of gouge a little tunnel into. And I'm using an X-Acto knife and I'm gonna score this thing up. That way all these sections pop off easy. Again, using the clay sculpting tool to kind of rip um, the foam apart. And all I did was use that little hook on the clay sculpting tool to really dig myself a hole in there. Um, so once this is all done, it's going to look like a really deep hole going into the wall. It's going to look awesome. All right, now we'll take an X-Acto after we put the clay on. Clay is still um, soft. And we're going to cut out um, the grout lines of these bricks to make sure that we still have some bricks in place. And it's going to look like this wall kind of has just collapsed and crumbled due to something, you know, living in there and digging the, the itself out. All right, now I just made a few bricks out of some of the um, DOS clay that was laying around to have them just kind of, you know, laying in there like they fell over time. Now I'm gonna add some um, crafting rocks, some rocks I got at the craft store with some PVA glue, add those into place. And then finally, I'm gonna add some sand as well. That way we got a bunch of different um, size um, aggregate in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a light dry brush of a leather brown um, over the brown muddy area here. And you can see how cool that hole looks. All right, now I added, you can see a little bit of moss in there up against some of those rocks. And here I'm taking some Vallejo thick mud and I'm smearing that all around um, the opening here and on the wall as well. Um, it really gives it a wet, muddy appearance. To me, it's like a, the finishing touch on this, this piece here. I absolutely loved it. Now I'm poking a hole in here. Um, that way I can insert a mouse that I made or a rat out of green stuff. 
Um, I actually bent my tool here that clay dried so hard. Um, but in a video coming up extremely soon, I'm going to show you how to make this little guy right here along with uh, another uh, sewer creature or two. So um, hang in there. It's coming out real soon. And now we're going to just take this uh, rat that we pinned and place him right into the hole there, pressing him right into the thick um, mud that we had just placed on the, uh, on the piece here. Then we'll go ahead and just take some more of that thick mud, place it up underneath his feet um, so it looks natural here, and uh, we're all set and ready to go. So these walls are a lot of fun to make and they're really easy to make. If you leave out the detail portion of it and you want to just bang out some walls without the rat, without the pipes, you could probably do about six of these in an hour. And with the package of the Das Clay that you'll find in the description below, you can do about three walls per package of clay. So um, it's really not that much money. It comes out to maybe like three bucks per wall. Um, and like I said, you could really kind of get really creative and have an entire sewer system enclosed which would look totally awesome. If you found this video interesting or liked it or took anything away from it, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. And if you do subscribe, please hit that bell notification for all further videos here so you don't miss out anything in the future. All right, till next time, I'll see you around.